All right. Thank you for your invitation. I'm very glad to be here and uh, talk to you a little bit about uh, what it was like during the pandemic here in uh, Sibiu, Romania. We are uh, uh, in Transylvania, <clears throat> in the center of Romania. So I'm going to talk to you a little bit about uh, our organization, what we do, and what it was like for us in uh, 2020. So let me just start the screen sharing. So as I said, my organization is called the Sibiu Community Foundation. We were founded in the 2012. We are a private local grant maker. Uh, so mostly what we do uh, is fundraise from the community and give grants to smaller organizations. So we are what I call an infrastructure organization. Um, of course, since we're uh, quite a small community, uh, sometimes we have to do a little bit more than just uh, fundraising and grant making. So that's why part of our job is actually helping people get together in initiative groups or um, helping the capacity of local NGOs, sometimes working with, with uh, young leaders and stuff like that. So our vision is a strong community in the city that you'd never leave. Um, as you probably imagine, uh, the problem of small cities sometimes is that young people tend to uh, go away to college, to other larger cities. So we're uh, sometimes losing uh, the young energy of our community. So that's also uh, sort of a backstory of our um, vision and mission. So mostly we are trying to connect what we call uh, latent uh, uh, resources in the community, get together the money, the people, the power the energy uh, to better uh, projects. One of our largest projects that we are best uh, known for is the Sibiu International Marathon, which is the largest running fundraising event in Romania, where uh, in 2019 was our best year. We had uh, more than uh, 5,500 participants and uh, 50,000 donations. Uh, it's a classic fundraising event and also a classic running event where we uh, People in the community, they um, they run and they fundraise for the, their favorite projects in the community. Uh, also, we uh, organize other type of community events like uh, the Days of the Neighborhood or Urban uh, Picnics. I've just uh, show you this kind of pictures because it's important to actually understand what kind of stuff we were not able to do anymore in 2020. Uh, so um, this was what we would do in normal years, but then came uh, the year of the pandemic and uh, we were pretty fast to adapt to the new situation. So before uh, our cities got locked in, we realized that something really important uh, is going to happen. So uh, pretty early in March, we closed our office and uh, so we are in um, remote working for uh, about a year right now. Um, we have to postpone our largest fundraising event, the CBU, uh, International CBU Marathon, which was a pretty big hit for us because it usually accounts for about 60-70% of our income and our activity in the whole year. It's a large uh, event. So we, we had a re really uh, large problems of, uh, regarding uh, the, the sustainability of our organization. So we had to cut uh, the operating costs about half. So we made sure that we would survive uh, this year. At least uh, this is how it looked in March. However, uh, the good news, if there, there is some, in, it was that uh, in this uh, one of the worst years in, uh, in, the hist in, the, in our modern history, it was actually for us uh, the year that we raised the most money from the community. Of course, this was most, more, mostly a consequence of the, the way we operated in the last eight years. And uh, the fact is that uh, in these years, we managed to create a community of donors around us, both of individual donors and uh, of corporate donors. So uh, the moment that the community uh, was in this, uh, large crisis we uh, were able to reach to our donors and uh, this resulted in the largest fundraising campaign we ever had um, also in uh, in the beginning of autumn we managed to organize one of the few marathons that actually uh, happened in the world in 2020 we managed to create a, 
procedures so that people could uh, come and run safely. Everybody would have an individual uh, start uh, hour, uh, which was uh, organized at the second. So uh, every 15, um, every 15 uh, seconds, uh, you would have uh, somebody starting. But still, we managed to organize a 42 kilometers uh, marathon, which was uh, it was a really a challenge. But it, I think it was important for the energy of our community that this uh, uh, important community event still uh, took place in 2020. Uh, also, uh, this year was um, the year that uh, because of the financial problems that we have, we finally managed to start our recurrent donations campaign, which was something that we have postponed for a long time. So during this summer, we managed to, to start this, uh, this campaign. And now we have one, uh, 100 individual donors that help us as an organization and uh, help us to, to go on doing what we do. Uh, so the, the most important campaign we, we had was called One Hospital, One Community, because in the beginning uh, we were, um, it was very important for us to help the regional hospital we have here, which was the most important uh, hospital involved in the COVID crisis. Um, in, the next, uh, in the next month we managed, so in only about one month, one month and a half, we managed to raise about uh, 600,000 euros, um, which were partly from, um, 2000 individual donations and partly from uh, uh, sponsorships from 100 companies. Basically, we sent emails to all the all the our donors to all our uh, corporate donors and um, we managed to sign 100 uh, sponsorship um, uh, contracts and managed to raise this very large amount and about uh, about half of the money was spent uh, helping the hospitals in the first wave of the pandemic, but uh, we managed to uh, save the money. So we had uh, funds in also for the second and now for the third wave of the pandemic. So uh, the money we managed to raise in March and April last year, we, we, still, we are still spending from, from it. We managed to raise a little bit more, but it was not needed anymore because uh, the initial amount was pretty large. So we started with just um, one, uh, our, our comp campaign evolved. We started with just one hospital, the largest one. And then we realized we should help more of the organizations in the, in the system. So our campaign mor morphed to uh, one community for health. And then um, in the last version, it's called just one community. Uh, which is the campaign that we want to um, uh, we keep want to keep and uh, raise money for other uh, issues as well in the future. Uh, so these are a few um, a few examples of things that we bought during this uh, pandemic for the hospitals, starting from testing equipment to protective equipment um, to all sorts of uh, medical equipment that uh, the hospitals needed and did not have the required uh, funds for it. Um, also, something nice that happened in the first uh, in the first uh, weeks of the pandemic is that uh, volunteers, when there were very little uh, protective equipment on the market, so we didn't have uh, too much things to. Um, we didn't have so many too much thing. even though we had the money there was no equip equipment on the market so we had this um, a lot of volunteers that were um, uh, gathered around this uh, uh, tool house which is a maker space and they created these uh, shields face shields for the doctors in the hospital and we provided them funds in order to buy the materials they needed uh, for these shields so they they created more than, I think, 15,000 uh, uh, face shields for the hospitals. Some of them also went to schools when in the in the autumn where schools where schools started. Of course, a very important uh, component of our campaign is that the transparency that we offered. So if you go to any time you went to our uh, website, you could see uh, everything, every little uh, money, every euro that we spent. 
you could see all the companies that gave us money so uh, everything is perfectly transparent and i think that's of course is probably the reason for our long-term success in fundraising uh transparency of course uh i was talking go about the uh, pandemic marathon which was uh in the beginning of autumn when the number of cases were pretty was has been pretty low um, it was a smaller event than we usually had, but as I said, it was really important for us to actually have an event uh, while assuring the best uh, kind of uh, protection for the participants. So uh, we had this kind of uh, objective that uh, running a tower marathon would, would not be any more uh, dangerous uh, than um, uh, going to the supermarket. So uh, I think we managed to do that and we still had a very nice community event, even though not people did not meet uh, necessarily in the same place, but they could still run at the marathon and fundraise for about 20 projects from the community. This has been our experience. Uh, I think even though this was a really hard year and it started really bad in March, we managed to adapt and um, I think it was really important that during the years we managed to create this community of donors and that we could uh, use the resources in our community, not relying on resources outside of the community and uh, both help the hospitals, uh, then help our organization to stay on track and also manage to organize our marathon, which was which meant funds for about 20 projects from other NGOs that could do still do their job even uh, during this uh, hard period. So I don't know if there are any questions or so. If not, thank you.